Hello and welcome to my craft room. I am Adrian and I use masculine pronouns. Thank you for joining me. And if you like what I do here, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. That's the best way to find out when I upload new videos. I don't really have a set schedule. For anyone who is new here, this is my whiteboard that I use to keep track of what I'm trying to do. It is the beginning of October, so I'm going to clear this board of the things that I completed in September, and I'm going to set the goals for this month. At the end of the month, and at the end of the video, I will check back in with you and we'll see what I've actually accomplished over the course of this month. So let's go to the board. In this first column here, up here in red, are my knitting deadlines. I am nearly finished with my City Limit sweater, which is the sweater that I had assigned for Rhinebeck, the New York Sheep and Wool Festival this year. That's happening virtually, but I'd still like to get it done. And my other deadline is a Star Wars Christmas sweater that has been on my list for ages. I'm actually going to rewrite these. The red is pretty difficult to see on camera, but also my eyes go right past it here in physical reality with the board. My goals have not changed for my Salazar Slytherin costume. I still need to do the dye samples. I still need to finish the shirt. I need to start sewing the braids. They're gonna stay as they are. For my little dye section here, I can take off lichen dyeing. I did that last month. But marigolds are going to stay on there, at least until I know what my marigolds harvest is for this season. I'm hoping that I'll have enough marigolds to dye five 100 gram fingering weight skeins of yarn for a mustardy yellow sweater in the future. And the jelly roll rug is going to stay as it is until I start working on it again. So this column is set. My very crooked to do column needs some work. So let's rewrite what I need to do for quilting. I need to quilt the second blue border, trim the squares, cut the sashing, assemble, and then bind the quilt. This quilt is being made in nine different quilted sections that will be joined together with sashing at the end. So we're going to keep the black vest mock-up on the board. And we're going to take off the pumpkin pin cushions because I completed those in September. And I'm going to clean up the machine knit cotton shirt by removing the back piece and the shirt piece, which have already been completed. I'm also going to add assemble under the machine knit cotton shirt because that's a feasible goal for the month of October if I do finish the sleeve and the front piece of that shirt. I'm also changing my last item from masks to black mask. I only really have the black mask to complete for myself. There's nothing super special about it. I just need a mask for adulting and I want to try a couple of tweaks with it that I didn't do on previous masks that I've made. Those are my goals for the month of October. My to-do list is likely to change or have things added over the course of the month. As I said before, at the end of the month, we will go over this board again and see what I've managed to accomplish. That's going to be it for now. I'll see you at the end of the video.
Uh, hello, it is Tuesday. I don't know the date, but it's Tuesday. Um, and I just wanted to document this really quick. I obviously have no footage of this event, but you may have seen footage of Gabby bringing um, Iron and Audrey over, uh, her two corgis, to play with little Miss Penny. Well, that afternoon, about 2.33 o'clock, I think, um, there was a bear in the yard while Gabby and I and the three dogs were also in the yard. <laughs> we were standing over here and the bear came out of those bushes and walked in front of that tree up towards the back there. Now, I've, I've lived in black bear country my whole life. You get the safety talk when you're five in kindergarten about what to do if there's a bear. <laughs> uh, and I've luckily never until a couple of days ago um, was physically in the presence of a bear without a fence between us. I usually see them from inside of buildings or inside of a moving car. So... Uh. <laughs> and this was a fully grown bear. This wasn't an adolescent bear. This was fully grown bear. So, uh, yeah, you might not see footage from outside in our yard for a while, um, just because I'm going to be vigilant about potential bears. I don't know if you were able to see in that last clip that I just showed, but this little guy uh, was hiding under one of those marigolds when I picked it today. So I found him a nice leaf to recover from the shock of being harvested. Got another bee.
<sighs> surprisingly warm in here, considering that there is snow outside, and this room is the most sporadically heated because it was once upon a time a garage. Uh, welcome to the end of October's video. I'm standing this far back because we've got a morning sun situation here that um, normally I d wouldn't care about, but I'm wearing all black, and therefore it is very visible when I get blind lines on me, so just, I don't know. Happy Halloween, everybody. Uh, this is casual winter soldier. It is casual because I'm wearing jeans and knee-high Halloween socks, which you can't see in this video. Before I get to the board, I'm just going to do a quick rundown of this costume, because costuming is one of the things that we do here. I originally made this costume back when Captain America Winter Soldier came out. This is a black button-down shirt that I got at the thrift store for a couple of bucks. I chopped off one sleeve about an inch away from the seam, and then I tucked up that seam allowance on the inside and tacked it down so that this has that nice clean shoulder seam. The arm is a silver... Oh, it's part of a long sleeve leotard. I cut off the bottom of it so it's kind of cropped underneath here, and I cut off the other sleeve so I wouldn't have to worry about anything on this side. The arm design. Uh, I should also take off the glove. See, this is just a long sleeve. The arm design I took off of several screenshots and some costuming help forums. I used to have a PDF of the pattern, but I don't anymore. I basically cut out paper pieces of the plates and then painted between the plates. This is done using fabric paint, you can see close up, it's not the best job, but there is a silver paint with a black paint on top for all of these lines. And then the star obviously was just a star pattern that I did in red. This red, I don't know if you can tell, is a little bit sparkly, so it's not the best red. But this was one of those costumes that I made for the workplace costume contest, so I wasn't going full cosplay stuff. But if you do want to have an interim arm before doing plate arm, this is a way to do it that is, you know, visibly, obviously Winter Soldier. This is just a cheap knit glove that the fingers were cut off. I had it from a previous workplace costume. The hand is a glove. It used to be an elbow length costume glove, and then obviously glove over to hide that where that meets at the wrist. Then the bottom of this costume was very simple when I originally wore it. There were black pants and combat boots, but today they're old ratty black jeans rolled up to the knee with uh, stripy Halloween socks. Let's head over to the board and see how I did for October. Rhinebeck sweater. City limits. Done. Cross it off. You'll have seen footage of it in this video or you've seen it on Instagram. Huzzah! Next thing in the knitting deadlines is the Christmas sweater, so we will talk more about that in to do because it is a current thing. Down to Salazar Slytherin 990 AD. Very exciting. We've got two things crossed off and an addition. Because I can never just finish a thing. So, die samples. I have finally done my first set of die samples. Obviously, you can see that I've written in samples too. We're pretty close in the blue to yellow ratio in some of these, but they do need to be darker to go with the linen cotton yarn that I'm using for the weft. As you can see here, I have half skeins ready to dye some samples with. I learned some valuable things while working on these mini skein samples, namely that if I'm splitting the dye powder, the mini skeins are too small to get those ratios right. You can read my notes on this over at my digital dye book on my website. To sum it up in a sentence, I use a ratio of 1% dye powder weight 
to the weight of the dry skein. So if I have a 100 gram skein, the total dye powder to be mixed in is one gram. But if you're using a 15 gram skein, a 20 gram skein, that's a very small number. And I don't think my scale was accurately reading my dye powder weight. So bigger sample skeins next time. But I've done the initial samples and for me, getting started is often the hardest part. You can see I've also crossed off the shirt, which I didn't bring down with me. Hang on. This is the top underwear layer, we'll call it, of Salazar Slytherin 990 AD. This is a hemp fabric that I had in my stash. It's a very simple rectangular construction, which is typical of the period. I used the tutorial that Morgan Donner did for her medieval shift. I'll link it somewhere. One thing that I did differently from other examples is I did split the forearm and add ties. These are five loop finger braid ties out of a crochet cotton yarn. I don't recall the size. I've lost all the labels for those. But it's fairly typical of what you'll find in the crochet cotton section of your big box craft store. These are split at the sides because, as you can see here, I almost never wear my sleeves down. I can usually handle it for a couple of hours, but then I overheat and I have to roll my sleeves up. Ways to roll up my sleeves are being built into this costume. I am most likely to be wearing parts of it at the Renaissance fairs during the summer. So rolling up sleeves is a necessity for me personally. This was all hand sewn using waxed linen thread. The only part of it that I think could be improved is the neckline. I did cut the neckline too wide so it doesn't fit the way it's supposed to, but I'm glad that I did it on this underlayer as opposed to the over tunic, where, where it's more important to get that proper medieval collar fit. This means my current hand sewing project is now the braids for this costume, which are basically medieval undershorts. It's made out of the same hemp fabric. These are a little bit more pieced out of scraps since I needed the bigger pieces for the fronts and backs of the shirt. Also, I'm kind of fitting that garment as I assemble it, so things might get weird with the construction because it's just not a garment that a lot of people have done resources about. I am doing the construction method for the braise where there are two large rectangles that go around the legs and one skinny rectangle that is like the crotch gusset. I don't really know how to explain that. I'll be able to explain it better when I have the physical thing mostly constructed and I can show you the pieces. Down in the dye column, I did do my matter dyeing using two-year-old matter from my garden. I have been growing matter in pots out in the garden, there was one plant that was not in a pot, it was in an old tire, but I figured two years is probably deep enough growth that I can still dig out all the roots without it spreading off into the countryside. So I dug up that one plant and did a dye experiment with it. And you can see I've added another item, matter silk. I have cut out most of the pieces to an 18th century men's shirt, according to Bernadette Banner's sketch on her pirate shirt, 18th century shirt video. I intend to make one out of linen as a proper shirt, but I have three yards of this raw silk noil fabric, noil, noil, spelled N-O-I-L, that I wanted to turn into a garment. I figured I could make a wearable mock-up of that shirt using this silk. You can see it's a, a schlubby silk texture, and it's a fabric that behaves similarly to a cotton. So I'm going to dye this red with matter, commercially bought matter, because I can measure the amounts 
easily that way. And I'm going to make a wearable mock-up of that 18th century men's shirt. But I have to dye the pieces because my pot is not big enough to dye three yards of fabric. So I've cut the two body pieces, the sleeve pieces, and just a big piece for all the collars and cuffs, little reinforcement squares, all those extra bits uh, that I'm going to dye with matter. Marigolds are still obviously on the dye list as I'm still drying and processing this year's harvest. Over to the main to-do column. I have made substantial progress on the quilt, which is good because I want to get it done. I have finished quilting all of the quilting bits. I have trimmed the squares. I have cut the sashings. I am now in the assembly stage. When you assemble quilts like this, you go in horizontal rows first so that these vertical strips are added, and then you attach each horizontal row to the next one. Because the trickiest part about making this look right, it doesn't matter how crooked your horizontal sashes are, connecting the two rows together. But if your vertical lines don't match up, it looks off. That's what I've learned doing this quilt, where the sashing lines are very obvious. They're in a contrasting color. That probably won't be as much of an issue on this quilt because it's the same blue fabric as the blue borders. So I've got a little bit of wiggle room there. I obviously have not gotten to the black vest mock-up we knew that was likely to be the case because I'm focused on the quilt. I did finish the machine knit cotton shirt. You will have seen video footage of this during the video. You can see from earlier that I did finish my black adulting mask. And I have started knitting the pieces of the Christmas Star Wars sweater. This sweater is being knit in two different methods. I'm knitting the stockinette body pieces on my LK150 knitting machine, and I'm doing the color work at the yoke by hand. I've done the two biggest body pieces, which super excitingly look like big red rectangles. This yarn is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. Um, this is the contrast for the color work, Dove Heather, and the red is Hollyberry. I may need to order a couple more skeins of this, but we're playing it by ear right now. I have one sleeve sitting on the machine now. Once I have the second sleeve done, I will block the pieces to get them to relax a bit and then do the hand knitting of the color work. You'll also have noticed on those rectangles, I didn't do any of the ribbing at the bottom of the sweater. I'm going to do the ribbing later because I don't want to order more yarn if I don't have to. I do have a green, I think it's forest heather, left over from my Slytherin scarf that I did by machine. There's a point in the color work where if I run out of the red yarn, I'm fine. The color work motif, the bottom half is mostly red and then the top half is mostly that gray. And if at that dividing line, I run out of red yarn, I can just do the top half with green. And I can also do the ribbing in green. It's a Christmas sweater. Nothing from the future column is moving over to the to-do column. Although when I add the 18th century shirt to that to-do column, that will be a wearable mock-up for this future item, my good friend. 1776. I will talk about this in the future at some point when I am actively designing and working on this project. So that's going to do it for this video. I do not have any extra announcements that I know of. I've posted two additional videos in the month of October, so if you have not seen them, there is a Halloween Hussif video where I hand sew a Hussif in an eerie and Halloweeny way. And I posted an audio short story, The Pale Man by Julius Long. It's a public domain short story originally published in Weird Tales back in 1934. And it's a little spooky, but not like 
horrifying. But I had a lot of fun making it, so if you want to check that out, it's only 16 minutes long, including the end credits bit. It's soundscaped and occasionally has music. So go check that out if you want to. Also, if you want to follow along with these things that I'm doing, uh, consider hitting that subscribe button down below. Or you can go check out my website at freakishlemon.com. The things that I'm involved with are usually linked there somehow. That's gonna do it for me. Goodbye. Thank you.